Episode 6, here we go. Catch your death out there. Huntress. Four more. And so early in the morning. What time of day is an ideal time to die? I'm a governor, not a philosopher. It's excessive. The people already resent you, and Tiberius will be loath to hear of another insurrection. Four convicted revolutionaries. Jewish zealots, darling. Leave the governing to me, hmm? Go back to bed. I haven't been sleeping well. Huh. Go pick some flowers. And where are you going? I have a date. Oh. An old friend. Hmm. You don't have friends. I do so. You have valuable contacts. People whom you find useful. Strategic acquaintances. Maybe you should be governor. What are you doing? You know John and Thomas healed a blind person once. I'd love to do it again. I can see that you are sharpening weapons, but why? Some of us are worried, Matthew. Things are becoming serious. More people have heard. I mean, you were there when he healed the bleeding woman. Of course, I wrote it all down. But I did not see what happened in the house. I said I'll give you the details later. I don't want you to forget. I told you. I won't forget. Crowds were pushing in. A hobbling woman was able to grab at him. 
Only the fringe of his garment, James. The power went out of him without his consent. It looked like he was gut punched. He didn't say that it hurt. No, it just looked like it. If we had had blades, we could have hurt her. Might have had to. Well, I know someone who did have a blade. He just neglected to use it. I was distracted. You know I don't do well in crowds. So what if he did? You can't just stab people who get close to him. The irony is, iron sharpens iron. Don't you dare finish that sentence. Well, Nathaniel has a point. If we had kept the crowd at bay, that poor woman would never have been healed. I assessed that he was in no real danger. Yeah, he just wanted to know who did it. Yes, he praised her faith. He called her daughter. Philip, is that one of Eden's knives? Yeah. Look, I, I don't think all of this paranoia about protecting Jesus is necessary. You just asked her for it? Yes, she mentioned it hadn't been sharpened in a long time. <laughs> I understand, Simon. What with all the time you're spending with your Roman. Gaius puts his sandals on one foot at a time, just like you and me. Gaius? Yes, Matthew. We're fixing the cistern unless these ingrates like trekking to the old well. Gaius is not an evil man. Oh, wonderful. Now we have two devoted fans of a terrorist. Yes, he has been ruthless, but he's not like other Roman soldiers. Associating with him could hurt our reputation with the pilgrims in the tent city. Do we have a reputation? Reputation has never really seemed like a priority of his. If you all are sharpening weapons, should I be too? Matthew, you have the sharpest weapon of all. His wit? <laughs> <laughs> his mind. And your pen, you can poke somebody in the eye with it in a pinch. I could not do that. I'll show you. If you need anything sharpened, just leave it there. Tell me about the one you're sharpening. It's a dagger. Why don't you sharpen the kitchen knife? Or a utility knife? What an axe. Dagger is a weapon, Nathaniel. You could turn my kippa into a weapon, Z. Why did you pick up a dagger? I'm not sure I can trust you with information. Fine. Little James! You're riding and changing position to this, okay? So you go from here to here, but you keep the book like that, because if you're riding, you pretend like nothing's happening, you stabilize yourself, and then the sharp move forward, just change the thing, and then surprise them. Don't be afraid, I'm gonna show it, huh? You got it. Okay? So this, once again. You see? What's going on? Members of the order have tracked me to Capernaum. Dangerous men? They thought. So tell Jesus. These men train a lifetime for one thing. To kill. Jesus cannot be involved. You don't solve problems with the dagger anymore, see? I will not put Jesus in danger. Let him decide that. He's doing what? He's buying an olive grove. Probably right about now, actually. Yeah. Judas and the women, they're there with him. What does he want with an olive grove? He's done with fishing. He wants to press olive oil. So Zebedee is done fishing. What do you care? Dominus. You have brothers, Gaius. Yes, sir, one. Germanic origins, and you only have one? Yes. Hmm. Older or younger? What? Your brother. I could have you drawn and quartered for not answering me the first time. Younger. Ah. And did he ever tell on you? If you broke a dish, stole a fruit, did something with a girl? I do not often reminisce, but yes. Atticus is meeting with Pilate in Jerusalem, and he's telling on me like a meddling little brother. 
He's there right now, slandering our oversight of Capernaum. I need Pilate's endorsement if I ever hope to get a promotion. Your record speaks for itself, Dominus. You have utterly failed me in the tent city. I will do better. You're not enforcing the ordinances I suggested. And worst of all, they have no money. Zero. No one works. They're waiting around for a spectacle from the preacher who I might add, I thought we were done with. And jailing them costs money, so. How can I make it right? You could kill Jesus of Nazareth. Make a very public display of it so they have no reason to stay. But then they will revolt, and it gets bloody, and I hate the wailing. Ah, oh, I do hate the death wailing. I don't know how Pilate does it. Anyway, we're not savages. Let's get rid of the tent city. What? How can I do that? Gaius, use your imagination. If you see a damaged home, Tell them it's not up to code and tear it down. If you see somebody who's sick, arrest them for spreading pestilence. Somebody selling wares? Tell them they don't have permission and shut them down. Put out the fires, Gaius, until it's too cold, dark, and miserable to stay. Primmy. I know what I must do, Dominus. No, the show is not Mormon. It is made by an evangelical Christian, so please stop spreading false information. Thank you. Philip, it's me, Leander. Who? Okay. Take it easy. It's Leander. From Nave. <clears throat> Drop your knife. Drop your knife. Oh, no, no, I, I forgot I had this. There you go. Sorry. Who are you? What is happening? You guys remember me, right? I, I was the one who showed you out when the council said you had to go. <sighs> Leander? Yes! Leander. Why didn't you just knock? I did, but I didn't want to shout. Why? Because no one can know I'm here. What's happened? The Decapolis is up in arms because of you. What are you talking about? We, we, we didn't even go to any cities in the Decapolis. People from there overheard you in Nave, like me, and not everyone took it as well as I did. Took what? You're preaching! The consequences of your mission were disastrous. Consequences? The Decapolis is mostly Hellenist, but it's also a melting pot. Jews, Romans, Seleucids, Arabians. Oh, it sounds messy. It is. <laughs> it's already barely holding it together. Your preaching made it... The town is on fire. I'm not really on fire. Some places. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We only preach the Jews. It doesn't matter who you were there for. A few Greeks overheard, some Jews kept sharing what you said. Before you know it, a few Greeks quit worshipping Olympian gods or stopped reading the auspices. That made people angry, so they turn on the Jews. The Jews closed ranks and sent the Hellenists and sympathizers out of their communities. Oh, man. You guys really turned the place upside down. Sorry? You said your teachings were interrupted. Incomplete. Well, not by choice. We were sent away. But what you did say spread to the ten cities of the Decapolis. The tensions we have in Nave boiled up everywhere. The whole area. 
The new wineskins bursting the old. People want to know more. They're hungry for the words of your rabbi Jesus. It, it was an isolated mission. We, we were sent out two by two for a specific time to strengthen and unify our people. Your mission can't be over. It's brother against brother out there. Is that what you meant for us? Of course not. Then come back and finish what you started. Next time, knock louder! Wendelled. Hmm? The olives. They're disgusting. We already knew that. We're working on it. Doesn't make sense. If the soil is bad, then why are the grapes so good? We bought an olive grove, not a vineyard. We need to speak with the grape growers. The best in Upper Galilee. Why? Because they know what they're doing. They know the soil. Ask Grema, okay? She must have curated grapes from this region for her wines. What are you doing that's so important? I'm writing, Grema. That you're bookkeeping. Judas keeps the books. Are we okay? I thought you were rude to Zebedee. Are they all tasting? Yes. I didn't mean to be. But I believe he was asking our opinion. Well, you gave it. I don't think I've ever heard a woman speak to an elder like that. What else? What do you mean? Tomorrow, please. It's fine. I don't need to know what it is about me. But I do have a right to be concerned when it comes to our work. This business is our contribution to the ministry. We have more to contribute than just supporting financially. You're right. You always know what to say. You can correct the boys when they fight. Why are you bringing the boys into this? Is this because I can't try to read? No. Then what? I... But you... Do you really... <clears throat> you pushed your way to the front of the crowd, you tore the roof off a house, and then you proclaimed for all to hear, I know you can do this, and the first words out of his mouth to you were, your faith is beautiful. Do you know where Jesus found me? In a bar, drunk, possessed. I pray every day I will never be anywhere without him again, but you just like it here. That must be nice. You didn't tell Jesus met us. Of course not. No, it's just that I am sorry to say this. I think we should be more humble. I'm doing everything I can, day after day, and I, I'm afraid I'm still broken. I worry I will never be enough. Mary, you are amazing. Can't you see it? I don't think we're supposed to see it. I can't imagine doing what you do. I struggle to understand your entitlement. Where is your curiosity? You don't even know the pain of our people or our ways. You just show up and you do everything loudly and boldly and right. You do everything right. Well, I am sorry. Please don't apologize. No, I mean, I am sorry for the shame 
and regret that you feel. Truly, it must be very painful. But Jesus forgave you. And you choose to hold on to it. And just because I'm not Jewish, doesn't mean I don't know pain. You don't know what it cost me to get here. What are you doing? <sighs> what do you see? Between the beats, what do you see? A stain. Is that dry blood? I come from a war torn country. My brother and I were on a trip to unearth minerals for the family business. And when we returned, our village had been wiped out by a rival clan. Including my father and my mother. This necklace that has been passed down to generations that I didn't want to sell for just oats it still has my mother's blood. against my weakness. Pitied myself. Forgive me. I do well to have some of what you have. how hard you've worked on the olive grove. And you're right, we don't need to ask Raymo who the best grape growers are in this region. What about the soil? You know my past. You think I don't have the best vineyard in town? <laughs> <laughs> it's just outside of town. A nice walk. We could use some fresh air. Are you okay with coming? Let's do it. Mary. I could use some of what you have too. Maybe not a shame. But the gratitude. Fair enough.
January 24th at 6 p.m. Pacific time on this channel, we will be interviewing the creator of The Chosen. January 24th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So all your questions, save them and we'll ask him live. Did I do it? Do what? Announce your position to any opportunist that happens by? Yes! I wondered, how can I annoy a red-bottomed old man? All it took were six men in this stupid sense. Old man? What can I say? Well done? You know how easy I am to amuse. No, you are definitely not easily amused. I'm surprised there's no wine in women. I don't drink wine for the effect, and I'm married, so there. But I admit. I was reading Miles Gloriosus by Platus. Do you know it? It's hilarious. But the uh, vain, glorious, swaggering, braggart soldier. Yes. What are you saying? I had you. You did not. I did. Yes, you did. Why are you charming? Haven't you been undercover for a year? It's been a year since I've seen you. I've. Uh... Had a foil the last few months. Oh, some prostitute into capitalism? Mm, far less charming, I'm afraid. The Praetor of Upper Galilee. Oh, he slips occasionally and claims the whole of Israel. Oh, I'll kill him. Wait, Galilee does well. Yeah, don't kill him. <sighs> Let me think. His name is Quintus. Revenues are strong. He was reprimanded for use of force after putting down an uprising last year. That's him. And he'd be all too honored by your recital. He's the kind of man that wants to be remembered. Hmm. We are very different, then. See, my problem with his reprimand is that I have been reprimanded for my use of force. So, if word spreads that everyone in Israel is heavy-handed, then I have to be even less forceful. How is the repartee? I tormented him. For you, Governor. Just for me, hmm? I don't believe you, but thank you. What I really want to know is what landed you in Capernaum, from the top? Please, I've got all afternoon for this. Really? No, about ten more minutes. <laughs> I'll be fast. I'm thinking that... I'm going to ruin my dress. We should have got an apron. I think we're going to need a lot more wood ash. We have been waiting for you. There's so much to do. To do? We solved the olive problem. I thought it was just the way the oil was made that upset you. There, there was a problem with the olives themselves, other than being too dark. They're terrible. Tasted like sour milk and wet hay. We knew it had to be something to do with the soil. So, Mary introduced us to some great vendors from the region that she uh, used to know back at the Hammer. Uh, are these good men, Mary? Not really, but they're not the ground. And they showed us ways to improve the quality of the soil of the growth that we purchased. First, we add wood ash to the topsoil near the roots. So we need you to go to each of the disciples' houses and have them bring whatever ash they have here, then send them out into town offering to clean up people's wood burning stops. All of the disciples? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure I have the authority. What if Jesus needs that? No one has seen him since the healing. We're just trying to be productive at the time we have while we wait. But he did give us his blessing on purchasing the grove so that we could support him out of our own means. What is that? That is water, vinegar, and pine needles. The great people said it would make the trees sing. He said it's like magic, but not sinful. Mm. That's an important detail. Oh, um. One more thing, sulfur. They said to add it to the wood ash? Yeah, so we need you to go to the market and buy as much as they have available. And if that's a lot, maybe have one of the boys help you carry it back? Probably Big James. Uh, I'm not sure I have the cash to buy up all the sulfur the vendors have available. Well, Joanna sent more money. 
Do this, put it in the safe upstairs. I'll get it for you, Zippity. Be right back. If James and John had been as enthusiastic and hardworking as you two, mm. I'd be retired and living in a mansion. Mm. <laughs> you know, because I'd be rich mm. from catching so much fish. Mm? <laughs> it's a joke. Where's Jesus at? Let's see some action. After last episode, man, that was the last episode was the best episode, I'm pretty sure. I love how there's some of you in the chat like, oh, I would never watch The Chosen, yet here you are in the chat watching The Chosen. It's kind of weird. Also, the guy that played Jesus is not an atheist. Again, stop spreading false information. Thank you. This episode has about 30 minutes left. The population of outside Capernaum's walls grows by the day. In hopes of seeing the peaceful preacher. Peaceful and magnetic. I think Quintus is out of his depth. And they say this is a backwater, you know. A bad assignment. A punishment, even. I guess we're sharing the same cell, then. I'm content. I don't want to rule over a warring nation in important times. I, I like the sea. I like the people. They're poetic and complicated. Except Caiaphas. Horrible. Horrible man. Now for a moment there, you almost sounded like a holy man yourself. I wish. Can't see ten cubits in front of my face most days. I just want peace. I want the people to get what they want. For Rome to be sated. Sometimes peace takes a war. I do thank you for the intelligence, Atticus. And I trust you. If the peaceful preacher or his movement ever becomes something I need to know about, I will need your counsel, and I will listen. Unlike Quintus, I understand your interest. Until then, learn all you can. Take care of yourself, Atticus. I will see you soon. Governor Pilot. Soup's really good. Thank you. What's in it? Carrots, vegetable stock, olive oil. You've had it before, Simon. No. But today it's a beautiful thing. Fit for kings, this soup. And the bread. Mm. What? Well, what's this on top? You know what it is, Simon. I can tell it's thyme and sesame seeds, but I've never seen this red spice before. Sumak. Salome gave it to me. It has almost like a... Has like a... A tart, huh? A, a lemon? Lemon sweetness? Huh? Someone help him. But not sweeter than you. Stop your pounding. Yeah, 
I'd love it if you guys could make this quick. There's two men from Judea demanding to see Jesus. Uh, welcome to Capernaum, where everyone demands to see Jesus. Tell them we don't know where he is, because that's the truth. Good night. They claim to be disciples of John the Baptizer, that they bear an important message from John. A message? Why wouldn't he have given it to Andrew and that woman from Herod's court? What was her name? Jonah, Junior, uh, something with a jar. Uh, Joanna. When Joanna snuck Andrew into prison. Well, that was over a month ago. They said they cannot wait. But they could be spies from any of the four philosophies or even from so Rome. sent Andrew or Philip to verify their identities. Yeah, they're all comrades. What universe have you been living in? What? Andrew and Philip are gone. You didn't know that? I'm not my brother's keeper. Oh, except when you want to be, then it's the code of Hammurabi. Take that log out of your eye, John. Don't you think I haven't noticed the thing between you two lately? Well, we're here now, working together to find a solution. Where did Andrew and Philip go? To the Decapolis for some reason. Judas has the details, but right now, we need you to come and see if these guys can actually prove that they know Andrew. I'm in the middle of having dinner with my wife. It can wait until morning. What if the message from John's disciples is about an impending threat? From Herod. He may have heard something. It cannot wait until morning. Oh, but John... It can. Sit there. I can say no to work, too. You done? Their names are Avner and Nadab. Mm. Where are they? Just over there. Simon, son of Jonah. These brothers were right to question our identity. There are strict edicts coming out of Jerusalem about false prophecy. Your suspicion is warranted. True or false? Andrew is a fine dancer. <coughs> false. Absolutely the worst. True or false? When Andrew relieves himself, he retches and gags because he hates the smell. We wouldn't know. He always goes so far away in the wilderness to do it because he's shy about that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Trick question. Well, the baptizer is being held in a maximum security prison that does not permit visitors or mail. Uh, if he sent you with a message, how could you get it? A woman from Herod's court, Joanna. All right, I believe you. What's the message?
I recognize you from the Order. Mine will be the last face you see. I suppose you could kill me. But my rabbis will be the face that awaits me in heaven. Is that why you turned traitor? I joined the Order to fight for the Messiah's coming. And he is here, brothers. It was chilly last night. Um, yes. It looks like your tent is damaged. Right, yes. You need a hand? I'm certain. No, thanks. That is a Roman soldier. Taxes are still collected? Yes. And the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is no kingdom that I've ever been promised. He is not what we thought, brothers. I have bet my life on it. I have given up the seeker and our way of life to follow the Christ after I witnessed the healing of my brother. That's it? That's what you want me to ask him? Yes. We'll tell him when we see him. I'm sorry. How soon can we expect that response? He will know how soon we can expect that response. Let me tell you something about that word, soon. The only remedy is to amputate. Amputate? Well, now, that's not look good at all. Next, next. 
expedite that, right there. What's going on? How long has he been here? Uh, not long. As soon as he showed up, he was surrounded. He's safe. He'll be... Let's get you closer. Soon might be now. Let's get John's question answered. I know. I know. Thank you. Let me see your wife. Are you, Lord our God, King of the Universe? Let, let's save those big titles for a little bit. <laughs> Master. Ah, yes. What do we have here? These are two of your cousin's disciples, Avner and Nadal. Jesus of Nazareth? That name I respond to readily. I will not be returning to Nazareth in this lifetime. The baptizer has an urgent question for you. I recognize you from the day John introduced me to Andrew. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world. Yes. Good memory. <laughs> My cousin can get excited. So, what does John want to know? Huh? Simon brought us in haste. This isn't appropriate here. We can talk later. Sam? I actually think now is the perfect time. Who here has experienced John the Baptizer in some way? I know some of you rejected John, but some of you believed his message. He has had a profound impact on so many in this region. And these are two of his disciples, so let's welcome them. Hmm? Some of you may also know that John is currently imprisoned by Herod in Machairus. I think it would be instructive for us to hear what's on his mind in the midst of such challenge. It's a difficult question. It might be better privately. It's fine. This is healthy. <clears throat> he sent us to ask you if you are really the one who is to come. Or should we look for someone else? Say that last part again. Should we look for someone else? For those of you who could not hear, John the Baptizer, my cousin, who has prepared the way for me, is now questioning if I'm the Messiah or if maybe we should keep waiting. John is getting impatient, yes? It's one of his quirks. He has been in prison a long time. Word reached our ears about what happened in Nazareth that you said the spirit of the Lord is upon you to proclaim liberty to the captives. If you say you are here to free prisoners, then why does he remain? He rightfully wonders why you would allow his entire ministry to be halted by an impostered king. 
Proclaiming liberty to the captives can mean more than just freeing inmates. There are many kinds of captivity that keep people. Is that what we're supposed to tell him? No, that's just for you. We heard our former comrades Andrew and Philip have gone to the Decapolis. Is that where you're planning to launch the revolution to overthrow Rome? I have something in mind for the Decapolis. And it will be revolutionary, but probably not in the way you're thinking. What are we supposed to report back? Careful. Careful. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The mute speak. And the poor have the good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. I will always be offended by blasphemy. As should all of you! You saw what happened to his daughter. You know this isn't blasphemy. I did not see what happened. Your supposed rabbi disrespected me as a holy man. Another sign of his evil spirit. And they also don't know any of the details that happened. He is hiding something. And I cannot stand here and allow you all to be deceived by his sorcery. Even if I'm the only one willing to protect you. Go. Relay to my cousin what you have seen and heard here today. And add to that the dead are raised as well. And tell John I love him. Did my response to the baptizer's disciples sound to any of you like a rebuke? Yes. I can always count on you, Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. Many of you were baptized by John. I myself was baptized by him. You heard how strong he was, how passionately he believed. And yet now, even he has questions. When you went to the wilderness to see him, did you expect to see a reed shaken by the wind? Someone in fine clothing, like those in king's courts? Or did you go to see a prophet? Prophet! A prophet! A prophet. Yes. And I tell you, John is who Isaiah and Malachi spoke of. What did they say, Big James? Behold, I send my messenger before you, who will prepare the way before you. Yes, and this should tell you something. Among those born of women, none is greater than John. And even he has questions. Another demon-possessed blasphemer, and you call him great. He called your religious leaders, you and men of God, vipers! Are you going to say something? I think his silence is his response. And here's what's so wonderful, though. None are greater than John here on earth. In the kingdom of God, the one who is the least is even greater than he. And John himself would say the same. So please, listen carefully. Do not waste the time right now to hear the truth that I have for you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yet so many in this generation are missing it. Do not miss it. Those of you who have rejected John's message of repentance, and those who are now rejecting mine, you remind me of the children in the marketplace that play games while the adults are busy. And you know how they pretend to be adults in a wedding or even a funeral. You are like the children who refuse to play. Whether it's a happy game or a sad game, it doesn't matter what it is. And like Aesop's fable, the others say, we played the flute for you and you did not sing. We sang a dirge and you did not weep. You and those in your order say John has a demon because he lived in the wilderness, preaching repentance while refusing bread and drink. And now the Son of Man comes, preaching salvation while eating and drinking and dancing. And I'm called a glutton and a drunkard. 
a friend of tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> it doesn't matter what is put in front of you. You will reject it. Beware of this. Wisdom means nothing if it's not acted on. Wisdom is justified by all her works. As you see what is happening to those around you, as you see the lives being changed by repentance and salvation, do not ignore the evidence of the kingdom of God. Woe to you if you do not receive it. Pardon, no, I would like to remind everyone um, that Quintus has imposed a limit of 25 people uh, for all outdoor gatherings in the latter part of the day. Um, by my you know, estimate, uh, we will very soon uh, be at risk of detainment. That man is right. All of you, return to your homes and shelters immediately. I said immediately. Let's return to our homes. It's all right. I will report all of this. You aren't deceiving. I said, go home. The heresy hunters are alive and well, even in the Bible. See, that's the kind of scenes I'm talking about. I want to see Jesus on here, man. I love it. Do you understand now? I understand very little of what I, of what I heard. Even less of what I saw. The Messiah does not need our attackers. Maybe you've forgotten what the order stands for, but we haven't. Enough! Are you blind? This is not a traitor. You could join me. I'll find my own path. But I will return to the order with the truth. Simon Zacharias. His death. Wow. I can never decide what is more fun. Watching you do the miracles or watching the reaction. Uh, the miracles are so much better when the Pharisees are around. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We need to get you to a new place. Is there a camp we should take you to? Or do you want to stay at Simon's again? Probably best to get you to a new place. Maybe with Andrew. I think it would be best. Where is it? Where did we stop? It's him. Barnaby, we don't need to bother. It's fine, Shula. I'm grateful you brought Barnaby here for the healing of his leg. No, uh, I brought her. She's... She's the one who... I know Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Please. She won't ask. Shula, are you afraid to ask for healing? Yes. Do you have faith that I can heal you? Of course. Then why haven't you asked? It, you, you have so much to do, Rabbi. So many people need you more. I'm, I'm used to this. Shula, look at me. Look at you. I can't see you anyway. I want to see your face. You and Barnaby have been so kind and lovely from the first time I met you. And your faith has been so strong, even though you haven't seen a miracle. You redeemed my friend. Mary's miracle was so clear to me. I, 
Zeit in die Zeit. I know. You see better than most in this region. But since your friend Barnaby here won't leave me alone. <laughs> Did it work? It's been so long. I'm afraid to look. It's time, Shula. <laughs> Did it? up here. Anybody else have allergies? I don't remember everything being so bright. How long has it been? Over ten years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friend. <laughs> what about him? No. <laughs> I'm fine. This is about you. This is about her. Some other time, maybe. We'll see. You're a true friend. Well now, friends. We must all get home. Barnaby. She will still need you to walk her home. It's getting late. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom. Thank you. I'll take this from you. I don't think you'll need it anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that was so good. I love it. Wait a minute. There it is. My, my leg? <laughs> Did, did you? Of course he did, Barnaby. Who else? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Barnaby. Now, get Shula to her home. You can do it faster than normal tonight, huh? <laughs> Shula! <laughs> no Pharisees around for this one. Still, just as fun. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, so good, so good. We have thirty-three hundred people on tonight. So this is a pretty big theater here. second you, oh, no. you remember Shula uh, never mind tell you later. anyway so the guys ended up being Andrew's old friends so I use questions that only someone who truly knows Andrew would know and it worked suddenly Jesus was in the square healing all those people and then he recognized John's disciple from somewhere and they wanted to know if he was the real thing which is crazy given everything they just seen Lost the baby what? You didn't know. Uh, say that again? Our baby. 
You were with child? You were gone when I found out. No, 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 no. This... You were gone when I miscarried. W were you working too hard? No. And that's not what causes these things. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want to distract you. I didn't want to make you regret your choice because what could be more important than... I thought that I could just keep it to myself. But I didn't know the hurt would go on so long. Eden, this happened weeks ago. See, I was right. Look how you're handling this. Well, I have a right to grieve my own child. I know. I know. There's no right answer. No, the right answer would have been to tell your husband. Are you mad that it happened or that I didn't handle it the way you wanted? I'm not mad. You're furious. I can see I'm it. I'm furious. You were acting like I did something wrong. I had no idea what was going on. I was taking advice from a Roman. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything. What? You did nothing. You asked nothing. You came home from being gone and you didn't even ask how I was. You didn't offer to help with anything. You just took a nap. You told me to. Yes, because I was being considerate of you. Because I was showing love to you while I was in pain, but I didn't know you would rush to bed and then have the boys over the next day. You told me to take a nap. Am I supposed to read your mind? Well, you were happy to read my body. It might be nice for you to try to read my mind. That's not fair, and you know that. I know that's not fair. I know, I wasn't always right. I know, I know, I know, I was a little distracted from losing my own... <laughs> You're upset I was on a mission. You're putting words in my mouth. But were they in your head? Don't ask me that. You can't ask me that. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm sorry for everything. He should never have called me. Oh, you see, this is, this is what I was afraid stupid of. Stupid mission to Caesarea with Judas? Leave Jesus out of this. This is between us. It's, it's not his problem. But, <clears throat> well, he's the Messiah. If it's not his problem, whose is it? comforting me. I've had a lot more time with it. Why did it happen like this? I don't understand. Why? 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 why You're asking why? the wrong person. Hey, I just was sitting here thinking about how much. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the episode. Two more episodes of the season. Wow. Wow. What an ending. What a really good ending. I love that last scene with Jesus healing the woman that was blind in the man's leg. Let me know in the chat. What did you guys think of that episode? It was the first like 30, 40 minutes. Let's be honest, we're a bit slow. They're building up, you know, but hey, that means that the scenes after are going to be even better. There's 3,400 of you in the chat right now. And Tuesday, the 24th, we'll be having the creator of The Chosen, Dallas Jenkins. I will be interviewing him on my podcast. That's Tuesday night, 6 o'clock in two weeks, right on this channel. So listen, all the questions you guys have put in the chat, is this Mormon? Is this biblical? All the questions you're asking, I'm going to ask him those questions live on stream. Now, obviously, we're watching The Chosen. I love The Chosen. I'm a fan of The Chosen. And we'll ask him all those for you guys, though. There's people coming in here like, I don't watch The Chosen, yet you're in here watching The Chosen. I love The Chosen. I think it's amazing. It's stated very clearly in the beginning of the season that it's not 100% biblically accurate every single thing, but it does not go against the Bible. And there's some things that are extra biblical, but they're not anti-biblical. And I just don't understand why some of you line up to go watch Marvel movies, but you're boycotting the chosen like we always say we want christian shows and christian content and then they create a christian show that's incredible and we boycott it so we got to stop being so petty and weird as christians and then saying oh the actor is atheist which is untrue the show's mormon which is untrue you guys come up in here in the chat and spread all these untrue things 
and all this fake news and it's just wrong that's called slander it's called bearing false witness and it's a sin so i you know it gets, it's frustrating the whole time reading chat of people saying oh this is mormon oh this is atheist with when, when things are just completely not true but yes in two weeks we'll be interviewing dallas jenkins on our podcast i'm very excited about that we have our new studio that we're working on right now we've i've my wife and i have been there and my dad we've been there like every day this week we've been there for hours setting up and so this tuesday i'll have no podcast tomorrow night at six o'clock right here on this channel we'll be doing our john verse by verse teaching i don't want you to miss that and then i will be on tuesday all day long getting the studio ready all week long getting the studio ready and then prayerfully next not this monday but next monday we'll be live from the brand new studio which is going to be really exciting new studio launching we've been putting a lot of work into it i cannot wait for you guys to see it if you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe and i also want to say make sure that you sow into the chosen the chosen is free you could watch it all on all platforms for free and so they're crowdfunded so i would really appreciate if you guys would sow into the chosen the link to give to the chosen is right down below in the description so pray about doing that because they're bringing out a lot of good t content okay love this episode Patricia said the last 20 minutes were so good the last 20 30 minutes were so good when's the next episode okay so this next sunday the episode comes out i will be preaching in arizona i'll actually be flying home when it airs so we're going to be watching it on wednesday Okay, so we are going to be, let's see, let me look at my calendar here. Okay, so Sunday, I will not be here. We'll be interviewing Dallas on Tuesday, and we'll be watching the episode on Wednesday, and then the finale is going to be the 29th. We'll be watching it on the finale. I think with Pastor Mike Signorelli at the new studio, most likely we'll be watching it together at the new studio, but we will see on that. If not, we will have, we'll be live from the new studio watching the last season, of, the last finale episode, which will be in two weeks from now. So next Sunday, I'll be in Arizona preaching. Info's on my website. And then that Wednesday, we'll watch The Chosen in the afternoon. Then I'll have Dallas I'll have Dallas on the night before. And then Sunday of that week. That's how it's going to work. Love the episode. It was good. It was good. A little bit slow in the beginning, but it, it was really, really good. I think the mods are just putting people on timeout when they come in here and just spam the chat on how much they don't like The Chosen. But we're not banning people. We're not banning people. Really good show. Okay, God bless. Thank you, God bless. Love it. Love you too. Okay, guys, I think we are going to jump off here in a minute. We've been live now, and we our goal on Sunday is just to watch the show and then jump off. We'll be live tomorrow night for probably around two hours. So come back tomorrow at 6 p.m. That'd be really good. 6 p.m. tomorrow. And I'll be uploading the sermon from Sunday in Arizona as well on the channel for sure. I think that's all the announcements I have for you guys. Okay. Tonight was amazing. I have a call here in a few minutes and then some other stuff that I have to take care of. Again, no podcast Tuesday. The content will be a little bit light this week because I'm working on the studio nonstop. We just launched a new video yesterday. You can go check out on the channel. We'll have probably a new video this week. Actually, we will. And then we'll have live tomorrow for about two hours. And then we'll be all week long working on the studio. Then I'll be going to Arizona, coming home. Preaching on Monday, Tuesday, Dallas Jenkins will be on the podcast. Wednesday, will premiere The Chosen. And then that weekend, Sunday, will be the finale of The Chosen. We have also a conference in Visalia there that sold out, a revival. And then that weekend, Mike Signorelli will be preaching at Lifesong, which is January 29th. Pastor Mike Signorelli will be preaching at my church for four services, 8, 15, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30. And then we'll be possibly going live together on Monday in the new studio. Good times, good stuff coming. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Shout out Marbled Heat. Said shout me out. I got you. A lot of good stuff coming. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Love y'all. God bless. Oh, hey. Didn't see you. I was just chilling down there listening. If, this, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Super easy. Super free. Helps a lot. All right. So right now, stop what you're doing. Hit like. Okay. I'm going back down here. Bye. Bye. Make sure that you like the video. Please like the video. It helps us out more than you know. Like, 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 like. Like the video. Love you guys. Good night.